back on your feet so quickly? Hmm. There's a non-smoking ward. Boss. If I listened to everything the doctors said, I'd probably die in here. No point waking up after nine years for that. Well, having you out of that bed makes things a little easier. Bad news, huh? Hmm. Things are looking worse. Go on. They found out about you waking up. And the man on fire picked this time to wake up, too. We'll have to move forward ahead of schedule. Miller already has the preparations underway. We'll have to wake up your neighbor, too. So he's not... He seems awake now. No. Well, he's not actively conscious yet, at least. He was a doctor, too. In his mind, that past no longer exists. Your past is his past now. He's going to be your phantom. Not some simple diversion. He'll act as the new big boss. And the act just isn't for Cypher. He'll be your face on the world stage. Until the time comes for your resurgence. You make it sound easy. We've been busy over the last nine years. His altered state of consciousness has helped us implant powerful suggestions through induced hypnagogia. He's experienced all your missions on record and shares all your knowledge and experience. To make him believe that he is the one true big boss. No one around him will doubt that he's the big boss they know. So, is he the real big boss or a stand-in? What does that mean to him? Nothing. The human brain is capable of many illusions. Of pain, of the future. What happens from here depends on his skill. You can vouch for that. He was always the best man we had. But... Nine years ago in that helicopter, he threw himself between you and the blast. In that moment, the man you knew died. He died protecting you. And now, by becoming you, he protects you again. This is just a detour in his journey to hell. And don't forget, it's what he wanted. He's in his dog days now. Hmm. It's not just him. We'll be putting the people in this hospital in the line of fire. They'll be your shield and necessary diversion to buy us some time. And you? I'll be right by his side. Can you keep it up? It's a hell of a lie. It won't be a lie. I won't know his secret either. <laughs> I'll believe that he's the real big boss. I'll have no conscious knowledge of you. Where's the lie in that? Self-hypnosis. It's nothing new in my line of work. Manipulating memories the past but that's not all when the time is right i need to remember that you're the real boss in a world it's double think in this year two plus two equals five and i want you to do the same right his bodyguard correct it won't be long before this hospital comes under attack we'll wake him up right away but he won't be back to full health in time we'll need to take him through his final paces yeah I want to see his face again. All right, John. I've never forgotten you in these nine years, but I have to forget you now. Adam, I'm counting on you. What's up? About the 1972 project. Les Enfant's Terribles. <laughs> you never did like the French. <laughs> All that Catherine the Great aristocratic pompousness gets to me, that's all. Palace talk. They can keep it. Les enfants terribles. The terrible children. That madness Zero started. Or the start of his madness. You found out something new? The plan itself was abandoned in 76. ATGC dismantled the project, and their account with DARPA was closed. So I was worried about what happened to you. Your sons. They're no sons of mine. And they're sure as hell not me. Just a bunch of cells grown in a lab? What they are is much sicker than that. Well, Zero doesn't think so. Eva doesn't either. To them, those boys are your clones. They're you, down to the last hair. And? The first boys were raised free range, like we thought. Both of them. David has never left the States. But the other, Eli, has disappeared. Might as well call it abandoned. They're through with him. Where is he? He was in England, Zero's home ground. Apparently, he traveled to Africa after that, but that's where he escaped from Zero's care. Just like that? Why? Who knows? Maybe he found out about his birth. If he's alive, he'd be 11 or 12 by now, old enough to think and act for himself. So he might still be alive? On his own, there? I wouldn't bet on it. John, if he is alive, what's the plan? I have nothing to say to him. Treat him like a human being, just another person. 
Boss, this war business you and Miller started. Since the industry spread out to the PFs, it may have a favorable influence on Cypher. To a ruler, an everlasting enemy is convenient. By directing the public's animosity outside his borders, he can unify their frame of mind. Guns for hire continue the war. Then enrich the economy with their spoils. War as a business will become a permanent tool for manipulating the public mind. A new business model. You might even call it a war economy. Before long, Cypher, or rather the Patriots, will be drawn to this. Probably only a few decades before it takes hold. It's not far off at all. Still no leads on Zero. We don't even know whether he's still alive. But the protocol he put in motion's making steady progress. Every day, SIGINS Web covers a little bit more of the globe. Total information control. Big Brother Zero. And it'll happen before anyone even realizes. I don't like it. You're the big brother of the battlefield. You've earned a firm grip on the world's military power. But soon, Zero will have nations in his. He'll erase the Cold War. All war from people's minds. And with it, the world's borders. Zero's will, his influence, will be unleashed with nothing to stem the tide. When that happens, opposition will no longer match the lines on the map. And boss, with no borders left, what difference can we make? War will have lost any true meaning to the world. Just one more gear keeping the wheels of economy turning. Another product bearing down the capitalist conveyor belt. The future your friend Miller wanted, that's all there is in store. Perhaps it's already too late. But human will should only be handed down and nurtured by human hands. It can't be entrusted to the system. Especially not that soulless phantom that Zero's left in his wake. No matter what happens, we'll have to fight someday to reclaim our truth. Until next time, Big Boss. Someone has successfully struck at Zero. Since Zero's using a private network, we get information, but we have no way to trace his location. That means the details are still fuzzy at this point, but apparently some new bioweapon was used. As soon as he noticed the dip in his vital signs, he had his stomach pumped and even underwent blood dialysis. But he didn't fully recover. Ironically, if Zero kept more company, he'd have been safe. Since the incident, his speech and actions have been getting more unhinged by the day. He's probably been rushed to another safe house for intensive care. But the location is a complete mystery. That's the way he operates. He went to incredible lengths to make sure his great escape went unnoticed. So far, I know at least Langley and the Pentagon were involved. He had a blackout triggered in New York to disrupt the transportation and information grids, and at least two submarines were sighted off the coast. The personnel involved were working off a cover story. Naturally, the White House was fed the same thing. The project is buried under a pile of dummy ops and backup plans stretching across multiple organizations. It's safe to say not one of the people involved knew what they were moving or to where. All top secret. No trail, no leads. He's living up to his name as usual. Only this time, even I can't find him. Now the only record of his location lies within the cipher AI that was at the heart of the escape plan. And that's closed off, with its data sealed away in a secret location. Skullface was able to put together this assassination attempt, but even he can't possibly know where Zero is now. I'll keep searching, but when you're up against he who controls information, it's gonna be a long battle. Boss, it was Anderson after all. That's right, the man who went by SIGINT during Operation Snake Eater. Following Zero's disappearance, he's taken over command of Cypher. Well, to be precise, the AI he oversees has. The idea to have an AI act for Zero came about in 74, when the data from the mammal pod penetrated NORAD. Clearly, an AI couldn't be allowed to make its own decisions. So they would take away its ability to act, and instead, create a specialized system in which the AI, bound by specific rules, filters the massive amounts of data it collects before passing it on to people. 
subtly guiding their decision making. A system of the people, by the people, for the people. So they began researching how to do it. DARPA apparently brought Strangelove on board to head it up. She was forced out after a certain incident. The direction of the project and any trace of her existence was scrubbed after her departure. Before Zero lost consciousness as his condition worsened, he left instructions for Anderson. Through a cutout, of course. Zero went out of his way to hide your location in order to keep you safe. This meant sacrificing his own protection. It was the only way to ensure you could stand alone as your own man. And here I am. The only link between you and the world that's passing you by. I'm your last connection now. This was Zero's last request. His will. Once you're awake, we need to discuss the best way to ensure your safety. Oh, and they've got a name for Anderson's AI project. It's called... The Patriots. It's all about ensuring that the concepts driving society appears the same in the mind of each person in that society. About maintaining the identity of the individual, and yet having that individual willingly make up part of the whole. I guess it's fitting to call that patriotism. Creating a united world. Zero's will is already fading into a shadow of what it once was. Systems, guidelines, rules, laws. When you take a mentality and fix it in a solid shape, put it out there in the hands of people, it can only begin to decay. No mentality can last forever. When the body dies, the will dies with it. Hello? Not there. Here. Huh? Thank you for coming. Please. You're... Hmm. Is it that odd? I suppose the cuffs have gotten a bit loose. Although, truth be told, I have been spending more time in pajamas as of late. No. Nothing. The tie, perhaps. Not the most fashionable pattern, I admit. No, it is very nice. How sweet. Will you take a little brandy? Uh, You're hardly under age, after all. No, thank you. Hmm. Please, sit. <laughs> hmm. Pacifica Ocean. What? Ah, uh, yes. You've already begun. Hmm. Uh. Not bad. A schoolgirl through and through. Even he won't suspect otherwise. Here you are. Thank you. <sighs> I heard you were sick? Poppycock. I just like to take a little time off work. You? You must feel that way sometimes. Well... <laughs> anyway, I could hardly greet my first guest from that damned bed. I, uh, missed my chance to catch you snoring. <laughs> now I'm twice as glad I got ready in time. Drink, before it gets cold. English breakfast tea. All I have, I'm afraid. Hmm. 
There were eight candidates before you, meaning you will be the ninth Paz Ortega Andrade. What happened to the others? They're in the next room. They've been taking it easy these past few months. They... Do you see any windows here? No. I've gotten used to it, this life. I am who I am, after all. And I've had my fill of cursing this bloody dungeon. Excuse me. But I can't help sometimes. Wishing I could see the stars. What should I do? Well, you... You could go outside? Go up to the roof? Wait for the clouds to pass? You would have a view of Manhattan. And a pretty one, too. But once the wind blows, and the clouds pass, you can look up and see a sky full of stars. Even here. You've had a hard time getting to where you are. Yeah. Yes. Sewer rats lead better lives. I know. Extreme training. Starvation. Days spent without sleep. Abandoned, hurt, and all but killed in every way imaginable. Some of your compatriots died. Others betrayed you, left you for dead. And you did the same to them. But through it all, you survived. And you alone made it here. Just look at you. I can see everything you've been through. Yes. Consider this mission a reward for the mountain you've climbed. Thank you. Yes, well, you know what's next. Yes. And you are prepared? Yes. I believe you. That ever so slight tan. Not the type you'd get on the west coast. If I didn't know better, I'd say you really did grow up around the equator. But it runs deeper than that. One look at you, and I see a wide-eyed student yearning for peace. Born and raised in Central America. I can see it all. How much preparation have you done? A little. You'll be perfect for this to strike back at Snake. I'll share everything I know about him. <gasps> but you mustn't forget who you're dealing with. If he were to get the better of you, well, I deeply regret having put you in that position. But beyond that, I'm putting my life in your hands. You can trust me, Cypher. <laughs> None of my friends call me that. He's gone cold. Shall I make some more? I know we are the only ones here. Hmm? There is no one in the other room. And how do you know that? You said I was your first guest. Oh, I haven't had this much fun in quite a while. All right, then. Cypher has been in hiding ever since his grand experiment. No one's seen him in years. All we hear are orders delivered by proxy. Except you. You met with him, face to face, in order to contact Big Boss. Tell me where he is. Where is Cypher? Where is Zero? I've never known choice. Where I was born, the language I speak, I've never had the freedom to choose for myself. But you, right now, are free. Do as you will. This will save Big Boss. It may. Will you really kill Zero for me? Not for you. All right. Zero is... Hell's Kitchen. 10th Avenue. 
He's undergoing treatment there. Hmm. Not exactly Hyde Park. His medical needs keep him from moving around. That is why he summoned me there. The other residents are of varying race and ages, but in reality, all 40 units are cipher personnel. It took him 10 years to replace the original occupants. He's got places like this all over the world. No better place to hide a needle than a stack of needles. Hmm. Zero is on the top floor. A room with no windows and no doors. Even the elevator does not reach it. Officially, the floor does not exist. The only access is by a secret staircase one floor down. Room 702. <laughs> Shades of World War II. Nobody realizes the entire building is a setup. People go in and out all day. But they're all cipher. The building blends right in with the rest of the city. They disseminate rumors that a gang operates out of the building. That keeps most outsiders away. And most of them are there as security in case of an emergency. But even they don't know what they're really protecting. Food traffic, goods coming in and out, phone lines, water and sewage. It is all monitored remotely by satellite and cameras inside and out. Should he need it, there is a sealed off water conduit that can be used to escape to the Hudson River and from there to the sea. But from the outside, it is just another building. A perfect disguise. So the Major believes zero suspicion equals total security. Very bold. It's just the kind of ruse I'd expect from him. So long as no one's suspicions are aroused, you could hide there forever. On the other hand, if someone figures it out, there are dozens of ways in. And he's so paranoid about information slipping out, no one involved has the full picture. That ignorance is a weakness, the downfall of a need-to-know system. The pitfalls are clear. Circumventing them will be simplicity itself. You hate him, don't you? Hate? He never left me to die. I owe him my life. I'm bound to repay the favor. Any way I can. But that's not what you really want to know. What you want to know is, do I hate Big Boss? <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate the man. I do deserve a little more of his gratitude. But he probably has no idea who I am. So you see, I have no reason to hate him at all. I mean to have my revenge against Zero. 
It's not petty hatred or resentment. Nothing so personal. Even the hottest lava eventually cools, becoming a mountain. And that mountain becomes the land. Scalding steam comes back down as rain, forming rivers, draining into the sea. It's then that nature's order sets in. Now I'm merely a part of that cycle. Just like Zero. And you. And Big Boss. Don't do it! That lava, that vengeance, is already set as stone. Too late to change things now. Don't kill him! The choice is not mine to make. Please, let Big Boss live! Proceed. Please! disinformation campaign. Most bought into the story, but not everyone. It was quite an incident, after all. I couldn't cover everything. But I did hide the fact that Snake survived. And that should buy us some time. Where is he? En route to an old foxhole of mine. A base in the British sovereign area of Cyprus. The military hospital at Dekelion? Ava's leading the operation. Ava? Following your orders? Funny, isn't it? That we should all reunite like this. This is an emergency. Otherwise, I sure as hell would... Yes, yes, I don't expect you to bury the hatchet between us. Something simply won't ever happen. Even I can appreciate that. <sighs> you too can only bear to speak with me from time to time. That's fine. But I don't want Snake to die. Surely we can come together on that. There are so few men I can turn to. And you're number one, Ocelot. Keep him hidden. Keep him safe. But I'll stay where I am and leave the rest to you. That's how he'd want it to. Isn't it better for you to be there to supervise? Where I am, where he goes, it makes no difference. All that matters is getting him the very best treatment and security. The latter being where you come in. Will he wake up? And if so, when? I have absolutely no idea. But as long as his heart is beating, he will keep fighting. So please, watch over him. This location, it's safe. No one will find him. And if they try, I will deal with them. The information must be suppressed. Uh, which is what you do best. Guess you're still at the top of your game, huh? Anything but. I'm sick, Ocelot. Donald's taken over a great deal. He'll be handling this situation from here on as well. Though I wish it weren't so. This will probably be the last time you and I speak. So, you won't say no, will you? I have no choice. Thank you. you save your thanks. <laughs> One more thing. A proposition. Yes. I've prepared a ruse of sorts. One I imagine you'll quite like. What is it? You could say I've made another snake. Major? I'm not talking about the children. A mental copy. His phantom, if you like. I don't understand. You will when you get to Cyprus. I've set the ball in motion, but the rest is in your hands. You're good at this kind of thing. The best. I need you on this. If it's in his best interests. I assure you, it is. 
Snakes. Look after Snake. He's the toughest son of a bitch I've ever known. Yes, it's me. You weren't in hospital long. I had trouble finding you. Where is he? Safe. But in the same state as when you last saw him. We've had our misunderstandings, you and I. But as you've made clear, our relationship is strictly business. Therefore, I will limit this conversation to the business at hand. Please understand that I don't dislike you. Not inherently. Where is Snake? Now, now. Settle down, or I'll have to hang up. <sighs> and then you never hear from me again. Do you understand? <sighs> First, about your boss. I had him moved once he was stabilized. I'm sure it came as quite a shock to you when you woke up. You'll have to forgive me. I told them to stop putting me under. Surely you understand. Specialized medical treatment in places like that can be positively nightmarish. We couldn't have left him there forever. And to be honest, I was entirely comfortable leaving matters in your hands. Don't take it the wrong way. Anyone looking for him would be looking for you. He needed to be as far from you as possible. In fact, I'm still not sharing his location, even now. Problems could arise. So, instead, I'm giving you a point of contact. An introduction to a network of messengers who will lead you to a man. A friend to your boss. I'm sure he's mentioned him before. He knows Snake's location. More than any man alive, I trust him with this sort of thing. Keeping secrets or men in the dark. He's known Snake quite a while. Ten years longer than you. <sighs> Kazuhira, I don't care if you don't trust me, but I require your absolute trust in him on this. Snake will be brought back into this world, however long it takes. Understood? The only reason we're having this conversation is because you still have a role to play. Which brings me to the next issue. What happens after he regains consciousness? When Snake wakes up, and he will, he'll need your help again. So when he does, I promise you'll be the first to know. The code phrase will be, V has come to. I'll then mobilize all the necessary parties. Think of it as an overture to a prologue. Until then, do what you like. Just be ready when the time comes. But you don't need me to tell you that, do you? I know it's been hard on you, too. But I can't imagine you're willing to just walk away. What are you talking about? Hmm? If what you're saying is true, then this is like wrapping a rope around your own neck and throwing it over a branch. What's your play in all this? This? This is for Snake so that he survives after he wakes up. Nothing more. After that, I don't care what you do. Then tell me something. Go on. I only joined you after I found out what you were after. To make the world one, you need Snake for that. And he's already done a hell of a lot for you. He has. So on some level at least, I think you're being straight with me. Hmm. Then why'd you do that to him? I get what you were trying with Pass. You wanted to get Snake any way you could. But after that, what you did... How could you do that to him? After that, wasn't me. You may not believe this, but I never intended for any of this to happen. My organization has many arms. It's just going to take a little longer before we're all on the same page. I admit, I may have been lax in my supervision, but something like that will not happen again. Whatever. One day, I'll know the truth. Just as soon as the boss wakes up. And then we're coming after you. This ends with you begging us to put you out of your misery! Is that so? Fantasy can make for a powerful ally. But remember this reality, Kazuhira Miller. Big Boss will wake up. And when he does, 
be there for him. Major, I wondered whether you'd really call. Exer, I presume this was your doing. Do you like my gift? I've been searching a long time for this. It is what you were looking for, yes. The winged dagger of a comrade lost to the sands of Egypt. He served under the boss back in Rayforce. I delivered this pin to her after his death. We were both so very young. From that moment on, she never let it leave her side. She was still carrying it in Salino Yarsk. How about the back? Hmm. Something wrong, Major? Nothing, just pricked my finger. The back. The scar is there, just as I remember it. And this white stitching on the back. From the white berets the SAS wore in the early days. Ah. Major? 30th of December, 1941. It's the inscription I made the day he died. Of course. His body was never recovered. This pin badge is the closest thing he has to a gravestone. When I gave it to her, she just kept on running her finger over the inscription. Never again, she uttered, as if reprimanding herself for his death. She pressed hard, embedding the inscription itself into her finger. You see, it's why this spot on the back looks shinier than the rest. He was... our brother in arms. So... Yes, it's real. Thank you. There's no doubt about it. Good. Now I have no regrets. What do I owe you? Nothing. Just want to talk for a moment. Very well, then. It's about our man, Major. He's been making some moves. Miller? Yes, I know. Rhodesia, is it? Yes, and up to his old tricks again. No matter. He'll stumble soon enough. Mm. Although, he is under my jurisdiction now. And that's what you want to talk about? Not exactly. You see, my being here has made me realize I can still be of use to you. How so? This country is rich with biological resources. Bacteria, nematodes, viruses. I'm sure we can find something here to bring that plan back into action. Forget it. The Cleanser Project was just another one of my predecessor's daydreams. And the vocal cord parasites? Were an excellent test case for reverse evolution. Nothing more. What matters now is the genetics technology behind that work. With genetics, the clumsiness in targeting an entire race isn't an issue. We can target specific individuals. No need to breed multiple generations of parasite just to get results. But I... Don't be quaint, Exo. Once the Cold War is over, our enemies won't be so clearly defined. Using humans alone won't be enough. An electronic network will span the globe, and our enemies will blend right into it. You may be right, but will people really settle for an enemy they can't see? Men want to feel righteous, need to see the evil in the enemy they fear. Without it, they'll turn their aggressions inward, find an enemy inside. You know this is true. I see what you're saying. Just as those robbed of their parasites develop allergies and autoimmune diseases, a man robbed of his enemy develops self-destructive tendencies. And I know all the symptoms. Ethnic conflict, religious strife, terrorism. And with asymmetrical conflict, deterrence is a joke. That's why we must depend on information control. People need an appropriate context for their lives. A context that's stimulating without being destructive. That balance is the basis of equilibrium. You mean to say people will blindly accept your context without developing any... Allergies. 
If we are to unite the world, literacy must be suppressed. To suppress the information immune system, to borrow your metaphor. Immunity to information. But to ensure there's no allergic reaction, while the immune system fights off parasites and pathogens. It's done, Exo. This world will become one. I have found the way. The world that the boss envisioned will finally become a reality. Race, tribal affiliations, national borders, even our faces will be irrelevant. The nature of communication itself will change, and it will make mankind whole again. Some things can't be undone. My face was taken from me. There's no taking that back. A face means nothing when one's soul is able to communicate directly with another. I have no intention of hiding behind your technological veil, Major. I wear my broken visage, this skull, in the open, so that I may never forget what I've lost. You. What are you? The chain of retaliation is what will truly bind this world together as one. Ah. Major. You son of a... The pin. You... Yes, the pin. It's too late. They can't extract it. You see, Major, some things can't be undone. How did you find me? The girl. You made her talk. I'm sorry I couldn't visit or thank you in person, but it has been lovely chatting. And now that I know you're no longer interested in the garden, it's time for you to step aside. You're a busy man. Lots to do. So I've left you a little time. Go to hell! How dare you? You planned this all along. Had your own agenda. All these years. Yeah. Now, you see, the world can never truly become one. But the boss... I've been... You've been wrong. You're no different. Just like him. None of you understand the world she saw. I would say the same to you, Major. Uh. steal it all away. Everything. The boss said the same thing. Only I understood what she meant. Major, I'll handle the rest. Oh, and one more thing. That pin badge, it was a fake. <sighs> I held on to the real one. I'll take good care of it. And continue the boss's work. Jack. I am 
almost thought you wouldn't come. Well, you're supposed to visit hospital before you die. But how did you get here? My friends at the SAS know how to keep a secret. The trip to the airport was a little dramatic, but the rest was easy. Still, I've had smoother rides. Oh, look. Scorted myself with my tea. I won't be staying long. I understand. Which one is he? On the right. And the left? We did just as you instructed. Has either of them woken? Neither of them, no. Not once? Not in two years. Their weekly EEG show stable activity levels. There's been practically no change. Jack. Jack? It's me. You look fit to run a country mile. Every four hours we move all of their muscles. Subject them to load. They're stable, but eventually... Yes, of course. We've done everything we can to ensure they're ready to move. Should they wake up. Still, it's been a pretty long time. Hmm. How long will they be here? Indefinitely. It's too dangerous to move them. And so far, no one knows they're here. I see. I am most grateful to you. And I need you to keep it up. We'll do everything we can. Can you give us a moment? Of course. Jack, can you hear me? Nice place, isn't it? I went to a lot of trouble bringing you here. Here, where no one will find you. Still, the ocelot's on guard duty, just in case. Maybe knowing that will help you sleep better. I had no intention of coming, but... This could be my last chance. If you'd just come to see me first. Do you remember the last time I visited you in hospital? Our first mission together. After the boss threw you in that river. Broke your arm. Ah, the good old days. I never told you this, but I had another team at my disposal back then, with a very special man leading it. Maybe he didn't like the arrangement. In any case, this man, he uh, seems to have done something to me. Which is why I'm quite sick myself, up here. There's nothing they can do. I always was the forgetful type, as you know. I'm all right for now, but they say it's a one-way street. If you don't wake up soon, I won't remember you when you do. I don't mind about myself, but what he did to you. I can never forgive. I've sent him to Africa, and I doubt he's coming back. Jack, once your little holiday here is over, well, who knows when that will be? But anyway, 
I probably won't be around. I'll be somewhere even you can't find me. A tombstone chiseled into the code of a machine. That is all I leave to mark my existence. Wake up soon, old friend. <laughs> Time is running short.